Welcome back, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. Uh, we are not at Ford Field. This is the fake Ford Field, if you are watching out on YouTube. Uh, but certainly it was the real Ford Field, where uh, almost a replay uh, of what we had. Uh, instead of an 85-degree day in Detroit outside, it was snowing the last time eight years ago. But certainly similar circumstances and uh you know i don't know what to say about justin tucker he doinks early uh, and then wins the football game in the end and lamar jackson did a lot of really good things and almost uh, you know found himself a yard short of uh, a, a doink short of losing the football game i mean this has really been one hell of a roller coaster ride these first three weeks that it felt like three years luke jones it's been wild i mean you step back for a second and say, why do we watch th these games? We want to be entertained, right? I mean, I, I think of Russell Crowe and Gladiator just asking, are you not entertained by what we've seen these first three weeks? But what we saw on Sunday afternoon, j just a, a weird game, right? I, I mean, the Ravens move the ball. You, know, you look at how many yards per play they averaged, and, and, and Lamar Jackson looks fantastic throwing the ball. Interception late aside, but even then, yeah, it still pushed the – it's not like the Lions took over at, their, you know, at the Ravens' 20-yard line. But drops and, and bad on third down, not good in situational football. Defense really good in the first half, really bad in the second half. And it comes down to Justin Tucker, as you mentioned. We, we all remember Monday Night Football eight years ago. A uh, performance by the Ravens was late in the season. Uh, that 2013 team that was not very good, but kind of fighting, scratching and clawing for their playoff lives. And uh, Joe Flacco on the offense couldn't get in the end zone. And Justin Tucker, you know, after kicking field goals all night, he hits a 61-yarder. And to be in the position they're in at the end of that game where it feels coming off of one of the best wins of the John Harbaugh era, Sunday would have been one of the more disappointing, brutal losses of the John Harbaugh era. Uh, and we can get into some of the reasons why and COVID absences and things like that. But, oh, yeah, even though you haven't needed them quite as much these last couple years because we, we've seen this – novelty of having an explosive high-scoring offense in Baltimore, which, frankly, we haven't seen. Uh, there was about for, a season for, and a half where they didn't need a punter. <laughs> right, right. So <laughs> not, not that he's been forgotten because he's made winning kicks and, and he's made big kicks. It's not as though he's been bad or anything like that. You just haven't had to rely on him in, in the same way. And you look at how the second half plays out. You know, they don't score any touchdowns. They, they kick a couple other field goals. And then you're losing with a minute to go. And you're thinking, wow, this is going to be a really – disappointing loss on the heels of such a, a thrilling confidence boosting win over the Chiefs and fourth and 19 you convert to Sammy Watkins somehow some way uh, and then Justin Tucker comes on and wins the game kicks uh, kicks the NFL record 66 yard field goal to win the game and breaks the old record by two yards it's just reinforcement of what we've known but uh, as I put it kind of passionately and just fired up on Twitter at, at the very end of the game, just put him in Canton now. Uh, I mean, this guy's the greatest kicker of all time. And I say that with no disrespect to Adam Vinatieri or any other great kicker you can talk about at, at any era uh, of the NFL. This guy's amazing. And now to put his stamp with an NFL record kick to win a game and you do it by two yards, you know, this wasn't, a 64 and a half yarder. He, he did it by a two full yards. And for the Ravens to win this game when it looked like they were going to lose this game, and, and you're thinking about what that looks like, what that feels like. You're going to Denver to face a, a Broncos team that I think is better than a lot of people thought. And instead, you're two and one. And it's another one of those games, much like the first two weeks. You know, wh whether you're talking about a loss in week one or the, or the win last week. You're talking about imperfections with this football team. Uh, and John Harbaugh said this uh, in the post game that, you know, there, there was some divine intervention. There was some goodwill, some good fortune that went our way here, but also recognizing, and Mark Andrews said the same thing, they've got to clean some things up and they've got to get better uh, in, in all three phases of the game. Maybe they don't have to worry about their kicker so much, but certainly some things that they need to work on. But boy, you, you just talk about the theater of last week and then, your kicker lines up for a 66-yard field goal, which 95% of kickers in the league, you know, that, that sounds like, you know, that's comical to, to well, even consider. Well, you know what's really weird is they tried to get him a couple of yards, right, and, and failed, and I'm like, 
he's going to kick it. I mean, you know, I, 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 and there's a little part of why didn't you get out of bounds, save it. I mean, all sorts of mistakes. I mean, and, mm-hmm. and not to mention the Detroit mistakes where you were, you know, giving the Lions, the old cowardly Lions, George Plimpton paper lion, uh, Eric Hipple routine, you know, and uh, lo and behold, I mean, it, it, it was, it was quite, it was theatrical. It really, it was theatrical. I don't know what else to say. Yeah. And, and again, in the grand scheme of things, what does this mean? Who knows? In the same way that week two doesn't guarantee anything. It's funny. You and I talked after the Chiefs win, uh, and we kind of com- made that slight, at least a slight comparison uh, with the week two win in Jacksonville or, or over Jacksonville in 2000 in Baltimore. Uh, and you know, what, you f- what you forget about is I believe the Ravens went to Miami the next week on a Sunday night and did not play very well, and they lost that game. And it, it was a game, in hindsight, it's like, wow, you're talking about a team that would on, end up being a Super Bowl champion. You know, the Dolphins were okay then. Uh, so, but it's just a reminder that this is a week-to-week league. In the same way that all was not lost after the week one loss in Las Vegas, it doesn't mean that the Ravens are destined to go to the Super Bowl after they beat the Chiefs. And you know, Kansas City clearly having their issues. Uh, I think it's worth mentioning that. But it's a week-to-week league, and you know – that the margin for error is so tiny in this league. As much as the Ravens at times have made it not feel that way the last couple of years with their offense scoring and Lamar Jackson doing video game-like things, you know that it's a tiny margin for error. So even a team that fancies itself as a Super Bowl contender like the Ravens compared to the Lions who are 0-3 and going nowhere fast, well, a couple guys, you know, a few guys on the COVID list, uh, a bunch of guys on IR, you, you don't do well on third down, you make some critical mistakes, uh, you're, you're – your defense really wilts in the second half and suddenly you're a 66 yard kick away from you know, potentially being one and two. But when you have, uh, like I said, in my mind, the greatest kicker in NFL history, and it's got to do it for several more years and there's no reason to think he won't. Uh, but when you have that guy, boy, it covers up a whole lot of flaws, a whole lot of def- deficiencies when your kicker can hit from 66 yards, it's just, it's absolutely unbelievable. You know, hours and hours after, you know, reflecting on it, it it's still uh, just crazy to think uh, what we just saw. As wild as it was eight years ago, this is, oh, another five yards back. No problem for Justin Tucker. Crazy. Luke Jones is here. He is Baltimore Luke. You can find him out in Owings Mills all week long, getting ready for the Rocky Mountain High. Got some friends going out. Uh, I was at Greenmount Station on Friday doing the Maryland Crab Cake Tour, presented by the Maryland Lottery. Let yourself play. We'll be moving it to Nacho Mama's this week. We're going to be in Towson at Nacho Mama's and Mama's on the half shell. I've never had a Nacho Mama's crab cake. Going to change that this week. I had Jen Fidelity on the program this week. We'll be talking more about Maryland Restaurant Week closing down and the Maryland Crab Cake Tour heating up as we get to the Nacho Mama's location on the north side in Towson uh, this Friday. And we're going to be at Coco's uh, with Mayor Brandon Scott next Friday, the 8th after the Denver game. And hopefully before the Ravens come back, three and one, all of our uh, sort of inside stuff brought to you by our friends at Coons Ford. Uh, Dennis is going to be here on Thursday, no doubt more excited than he would have been had this thing gone the other direction. Uh, And if you're on the WNST tech service, you know, you got this and that and COVID this and COVID that. Listen, we, we're going to go a lot of directions about Lamar, about dropping balls, about Hollywood, about Andrews, about who's running the ball, who's blocking all decisions, coaching decisions, throwing the ball. We can go through all of that, but let's stay on Tucker just for a minute here because it, it has been, you know, we're going on a decade. You're, you, you've put him in Canton and that's cool. Um, I think there's something to be said about the Wolfpack and something to be said about Sam Cook and snappers and, it having been the same and there's been some change here. Um, and also just the fact that he missed right earlier. And you're like, you know, it's such an automatic thing that, and I guess Matt Stover's made it that way. And he's made it that way that anytime there's a miss on the road against a team that you're supposed to be, even with all the COVID and even with all the injuries and even, you know, with uh, uh, Dalen going down early, all of that happening, uh, it, it, there's still something to be said that they have this special tool, right? That look, man, this is my 30th year on radio. This is 26 years with the Ravens. I think the first 10 years, there were no analytics in the way you and DeCosta and the nerds all get together and figure out the real value of a kicker, right? Like the value of a kicker was when we got beer at Hooters 
which I didn't do in St. Louis on Saturday, but I did think about it. Um, we would get together and draft teams and players and like whatnot 25 years ago and say, all right, well, the, you know, the quarterback's going to, Steve Young's going to throw five touchdowns and they're worth six points each. And however your goofy rotisserie thing, more people playing baseball back then, more people playing baseball in St. Louis as well. Uh, but the football side of it was, defenses got some certain points and interceptions were worth something. And when Eric Rett would fall forward three times in a game, you'd get a bunch of points because you had the right running back. But there was always something a little devalued about kickers and about the ability to hit it and the Jason Elams and the Lynn Elliott's right. And the, um, the, uh, what did, uh, what did uh, Peyton call Vanderjat, right? This, this legend of these kickers, but how valuable they are versus, they don't make $20 million a year. They don't go to the Hall of Fame, but miss that kick and find yourself one and two, you know? So you talk about the Hall of Fame part of it, but there's also an analytics part of it. They score points. We go back to George Blanda with all of that uh, and, and kicking field goals. That's cool. But then there's the game on the line, kick of this magnitude, of this level that, yeah, I mean, come on, dude. In the history of the sport, how many 66s have been tried ever? Most times they won't unless it's the end of the end of the end. And it's a desperation play to begin with. And it's one that's never been done in the history of the game, right? So <laughs> I, I, we have to put that into perspective and say, what's the value of your kicker? You, you know, in the, in the modern, I want some pro football focus of the value of having the best kicker and why that might be more important than having the best left tackle. <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm still taking the best left tackle, but the point is, but, and but I at, think this, at a at a at a cap level, I'm talking about. Well, what sure, you need sure. When you need, I'm saying you can get by with a, a a seven and a half as a left tackle and an eleven as a kicker. You might want that before you want it the other way around, because you have a seven and a half for a kicker, you lose a lot of ball games, bro. A lot well, of ball I, games. But I I think part of that issue, Nestor, is most kickers are seven and a halves. There there are. There isn't another Justin Tucker. There Did wasn't you know another that guy's name before he came in. I mean, I know he's been on a couple of teams and he played in some Canadian league. The, the, the other kid, the kid from oh, the Lions. Oh, the, well, they just elevated him for, from the practice squad. Had you squad ever heard because, of him? You saw no. him in the notes this week. But that's what I'm saying. But, I saw him after. He looked like he was going to wet himself when he had to kick it. <laughs> right. But, but the, po the point is there aren't it, – it's almost – we've talked a lot about the running game the last few years for obvious reasons, right? A analytics tell you – a passing game is far more about a good passing game is far more valuable than a good running game. The Ravens don't have a good running game. The Ravens have had a historic running game over these last three years. And we'll see what this year looks like. I mean, clearly you know, they're not firing on all cylinders. And we saw, you know, Lamar ran the ball. I had the 31 yard run Murray Tyson Williams, Devonte Freeman. There wasn't a whole lot of room credit to the Detroit lions on that. But my point is when you have something special, that's, off the beaten path of how you normally think about a position, how you normally think about a phase of the game, then yeah, that is going to stand out a little more. Put it this way, Justin Tucker, you know, whatever he's making now, I mean, I, the contract off the top of my head, I mean, we know he last deal he signed was the highest paid kicker in the league. I'd much rather pay him that than the ninth best kicker in the league, $3 million, as opposed to the 15th best kicker in the league, you know, one million dollars. You know, you start getting into that. There's not a lot of separation with all those other guys. They're just guys, right? There, there's been a very, very short list of great all-time Hall of Fame caliber kickers, and you know, just look at Canton. Uh, and and a lot of it is just the game. The kicking game wasn't all that sophisticated for a really long time. I mean, you, know, you had guys that were, were straight on kickers. You know, straight on the foot, and it was very volatile. You know, I mean, you see guys miss extra points all the time, and I don't, there, there were no chip shots uh, back in the day, but as it's become more sophisticated over these last you know, 25 Give to 30 me, like, years. Give me Mark Mosley flashbacks. Bro. I know, right? Well, <laughs> and, and there's a case. Mark Mosley was never the NFL MVP. That's the most idiotic decision that's, you know, vote that's ever been cast for a kicker being the MVP. Justin Tucker could have the best year in NFL history as a kicker, and he could make multiple 60-plus yard field goals. He'd never, he's never the MVP of the league because there's not enough value out of even the best kicker. But that said, that doesn't mean there isn't really good value and really unique value, and you can't quantify it all the time. 
And look, the 2019 Ravens, they didn't really need their kicking game nearly as much as you normally do. I think that's obvious with a record-setting offense, franchise record uh, for, for offense and points scored and, and what have you. But when you're in these types of games, to your point, in these types of games where it's a dogfight, things aren't going well, made mistakes on both sides of the ball, clear deficiencies, points left on the field, points given up in the second half, boy, it's nice having that guy that's going to cover up mistakes. And, and you just – you think of the history of the Ravens. It's a very select group. Ray Lewis covered up a lot of mistakes over the years. Ed Reed covered up a lot of mistakes over the years. Lamar Jackson's covering up a lot of mistakes over these last couple of years, regardless of what his ultimate legacy is going to be, because it's unwritten. But you have those really unique individuals who are so much better than all of their peers at their position, or in the case of Lamar Jackson, the running aspect of the game so much better than all of his peers at the position. And then you get to the kicker and no disrespect to Matt Stover, who's ring of honor worthy. He's a former pro bowl kicker. You have this kind of weapon in the kicking game where other teams around the league, they're not even thinking about trying a 66 yard field goal because their kicker has never shown the ability to make it beyond 55. Let's say even in practice, potentially. I mean, there's a lot of volatility in this league when it comes to kickers. To your point, Detroit's gone through like four so far this year. Well, and to your like point, that. they don't just guess on how far their dude can kick it. They, they see it every single yeah, day. Right. They know the capabilities in the same way Brian Billick knew Stover might be okay from 50-51, probably was never going to hit it from 55, right? Ex exactly. So it's just such a unique position to be in. And that's why, yeah, you're willing to pay – Justin Tucker, I don't know, $2 million more than, you know, where, where your line of demarcation would be as an organization to say, all right, this kicker's fine. He's fine. If you would be two and one today. <laughs> but, exactly. Exactly. So that, so that's where these instances are where Justin Tucker is worth every penny and then some, and you know, the Ravens have awarded him handsomely uh, relative to other kickers in the league. You know, he doesn't make $20 million a year, nor should he. But on days like this, you feel like, yeah, I'd give him a blank check because uh, we just won a game. We, let's face it, uh, we could really say the Ravens, in a lot of ways, did not deserve to win the football game on Sunday. But, hey, you have Justin Tucker. It's all that matters uh, when, when the clock hits zero uh, at the end of the day in Detroit. You know what? I, I'm just going to cut it right there, and we'll kick off uh, our next segment in regard to uh, all the things that went wrong, the many things that went wrong. And I guess we'll get to review the things that went right before it's all over with. Uh, one thing that's going right, the Ravens headed to Denver 2-1, and one, and uh, it was fun to watch the uh, Steelers flop around. Browns get a victory, so uh, a division in order, and we'll continue to talk about all these things all week long. Uh, Luke's going to be out in Owings Mills. All our coverage brought to you by Royal Farms. Real fresh, real fast. Also, call up uh, with Victor Brick and our friends at Planet Fitness. Going to be telling you more about Planet Fitness now that we get into the football season. And don't forget, our Maryland Crab Cake Tour is going to be happening each and every Friday. Kicking it off this week at Nacho Mama's in Towson. Uh, and then next week with our mayor, Brandon Scott at Coco's downtown. All of it presented by the Maryland Lottery. Let yourself play. Luke Jones can be found at Baltimore Luke. I can be found Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Instagram. Anywhere the stones are. Fake Ford Field. I am Nestor. We are WNSTA in 1570. Taos and Baltimore, we never stop talking. Baltimore, positive in 66-yard field goals.